Hi and welcome to Themeco. In this video, we will talk about one of the most used constraints in mechanical systems. I refer to the revolute joint or hinge joint for its similarity to door hinges. As we stated from the beginning of the course, we will only be dealing with 2D mechanisms. This is important to mention to limit the scope of the mathematical derivations that follow. I will give you the tools to understand how a constraint only joins two and only two bodies. You might say, well, I've seen mechanisms where more than two bodies appear to be attached in one point. And you are right. However, always keep in mind that when more than two bodies reach a point, or you think that only one constraint is taking care of joining more than two bodies, it really means that there is more than one constraint involved. But let's go back to the revolute joint. A revolute joint is a constraint that only allows the relative motion of one body with respect to the other body around one specific point, no relative translation between the bodies. From the definition we've just stated, we could derive important characteristics of a revolute joint. The fact that it is rotating about a point sets this joint under the category of geometric constraints. Let's bring a couple of bodies to see how to mathematically write a revolute joint. We said that a specific point was a key element of any revolute joint. Let's say that we have two bodies and we superimpose them or overlap them. We have body A and body B. Now we need a reference system with axis X and Y to relate all the vectors we will need. Then we need the point. Yes, the point we have been talking about. This is the point that will act as the center of rotation of our revolute joint. Let's fix local reference systems on each of the bodies. This point is considered in a position fixed relative to both bodies. We can find the position vector of this point O using any of the two bodies A or B. It doesn't matter which body we use, the position vector will always be the same. We can write this last sentence in mathematical form as RO equals RAO equals RBO. What will happen if we write down the position vector of this point using the two bodies as mentioned before? Let's do it. RAO equals RA plus AA U bar AO. And RBO equals RB plus AB U bar BO. As these two equations are equivalent, we can say that RA plus AA U bar AO equals RB plus AB U bar BO. This doesn't say much. Let's write this equality in matrix form. RXA RYA plus cos theta A minus sin theta A sin theta A cos theta A multiplied by U bar X bar AO U bar Y bar AO equals RXB RYB plus cos theta b minus sin theta b sin theta b cos theta b multiplied by u bar x bar b o u bar y bar b o. One of the benefits of having it in matrix form is that we can extract the scalar components of the equality, which are two, the upper and lower row of the matrix representation. Take a look now. These two scalar equations are the components of the vector on the x and y axis, respectively. To transform this into a constraint condition, we have to do a little rearranging. A constraint is a condition that has to be met. The revolute constraint specifies that the fixed point relative to both bodies must remain fixed, meaning that the equation RO equals RAO equals RBO has to be fulfilled all the time. To say this mathematically, we need to change our equality equations to represent the condition that the fixed point measured via body A is always going to be equal to if we measured it using body B. That is, if we want to subtract the two Cartesian equations representing the x component, the result should always be zero. Mathematically, this is written as C1 is Rxa plus U bar X bar AO cos theta a minus u bar y bar a o sin theta a minus r x b minus u bar x bar b o cos theta b plus u bar y bar b o 
sin theta b equals 0. The same applies with the y component. C2 is RyA plus u bar x bar AO sin theta A plus u bar y bar AO cos theta A minus Ryb minus u bar x bar BO sin theta B minus u bar y bar BO cos theta B equals 0. Simply said, these two constraints emphasize that no translational movement should exist between the two bodies in a revolute joint. Only a rotation around this fixed point is possible. Remembering that term fixed is relative to the two bodies where the constraint is acting. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.